Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Uh, somebody had asked me to do a uh, quick video on my tier 10 tier list. Uh, that's a lot of tier words there. On how I rank the current client battle season or even tier 10s just in general if you're looking for a tier 10 a destroyer. Again, for me, I'm a destroyer main. I, I like playing them. It's fun. It's engaging. And this is probably more suited for you to take a look. So let's get to it. As always, like, subscribe, button. We'll love you to like what we're doing here. Comment below. And if you, uh, again, th disclaimer, I I'm, this is just an opinion, okay? Uh, your opinion matters as well. And uh, everybody has different versions of opinions about things. Um, this is just my take because someone had asked me about it. And uh, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, great. Comment about it. What are your thoughts? Because uh, this is a uh, constructive uh, uh, discussion. So let's take a look at it. I'll just kind of go down in the order that it's laid out here and uh, this current setup. So um, Alvaro de Bazan, uh, I don't have this destroyer. However, I did play against it. My personal opinion, I think it's somewhere around. So if you want to know what the, the levels are, uh, S being just superly overpowered, broken, whatever you want to call it. A is, uh, I would definitely recommend, like, in the higher range. B is average, mediocre. C is not worth playing. D is not, why are you even here? So if you understand that basic understanding of tier list, just ranking up uh, from the top down right there. So uh, what do I think about it? Uh, Alvaro de Bazan, I think it's average. Uh, the It's got a cool, interesting feature, which is the burst fire. Uh, I, get, I did get hit by one one time, but it didn't really do much. If you are caught broadside and it literally just does a burst fire right off the bat and then pop smokes and run away. So that's kind of a kind of a hit and run tactic. I don't know if that is necessarily great in clan battles. It may work in, you know, randoms uh, for long period durations. But for clan battles, kind of a seven versus seven, trying to go in and cap and, and do so where it doesn't seem to have as much of a any any particular gimmick other than the burst fire, honestly. So I mean, it's just average. I think if in the hands of a right player. You definitely could figure it out. Palmilio, Paolo Emilio is kind of like this style where it's fast, smoke, and then, you know, do this hit and run tactic kind of thing. Uh, it, it's got a, a very simplistic average uh, play style in my personal opinion. That's why I don't really see many out there, and uh, I don't pick it myself. Again, I, I don't have it. Uh, if I did uh, have it, I probably wouldn't pick it much for clan battles. That's my personal opinion. Uh, Daring. Absolutely one of the best destroyers in the game. I think it's the most well-rounded ship if you are looking for a destroyer for clan battles or a ranked or some kind of competitive. Daring is right up there. Uh, although I have not seen many Darings out there that we played against, I don't know why. It's, I think it's a very decent ship. I don't I don't see the issue with it. I think it's one of the best. It's got heals. That's the selling point right there because it can forgive its mistakes, right? That's the biggest... Um, I would say a factor in any kind of competitive play. Daring has great AP, great angles for using the AP. I think you should focus with British, any kind of British destroyer. The AP is very, very um, devastating. It's You can switch to HE if you need to burn, and it burns very, very well. It's got the 10-kilometer torpedoes, which, quite honestly, I don't, I don't know... Um, if it's uh, that all that great, I mean, you can single launch them. Uh, I'll take a look at it here if you want to. Uh, let me see if I can move the screen. Yeah, I mean, look, if you want to take a look at the daring, daring ranks somewhere in the middle. No, it doesn't. So, yeah, I mean, let me see if I can get this screen up here for you guys. Yeah, daring is uh, average. So, yeah, here it is. So seven, right there. It's so daring is it, it has a good output and damage and so forth. Uh, again, the torpedoes are only ten kilometers. Do I recommend it for a competitive? Absolutely. I think it's one of the best rounded ships out there uh, for that reason. Again, for the, the for the reasons I just talked about and the quick smokes, good, good acceleration. It's really awesome. So, um, let me turn that off. All right, let's talk about my favorite uh, right now. You guys may disagree or, or uh, about this a thought, but right now, having built it the way I've built it and played it, I think the Druid is probably broken to overpowered. Um, maybe not overpowered. I'll, I'll take that back. I mean, it's not overpowered because it doesn't have torpedoes. Uh, you can still kill this thing. It, it's just very, very annoying. It, in the hands of the right player, this thing is quite honestly devastating. And I'll and and, and partly because uh, the issue of the AP shells. So let's take a let's let me take a look at where the druid is at. Uh, where is it at? Okay, it's right down here. So uh, the druid, I'll screen it over here. The main battery 
the where is it at the ap shells here it is ricochet angle 60 to 75 so you got to get this thing out if you want to angle against this thing you got to get at at least 75 plus degrees to mitigate as much damage you can however these things are still plunging into your superstructure at the rate of literally 1.2 uh, seconds uh you're getting damage right off the bat initial speed 975 meters per second pretty darn fast uh the damage is pretty horrendous 22 i mean every second you're dealing about if you get full pins on it 2200 damage every second i mean the fuse time's incredible 0 0.005 uh man this it is really a difficult thing to work with uh, to go against so that's why i think the druid is probably one of the one of the most powerful um you know ships in the game and uh yeah it's i think it's really almost a, <laughs> if you build it right maybe broken but uh, it, when I've been playing with in clan battles, this thing is deadly. It can take on cruisers, and it definitely bullies DDs. It definitely bullies uh, cruisers at the right instance, especially light cruisers. Battleships are just acceptable to it. It's got the quick smokes, the, the fast firing guns. The guns are in the front. Now, the downside is the guns break really easily, and there, there are only two of them, and they're in the front. So what is the place all like? Well, you're nose into something, and you're always firing... Uh, in the slim profile, so the only place to shoot at is the front of the ship. So these things are so susceptible to getting damaged. Um, yeah, definitely very ridiculously power, powerful. So I recommend that. Elbing, very very. Uh, now with the new legendary upgrade where the turrets swing so fast, is which I have it built for. These things are ridiculous, and, and the two turrets are in the back. So if you can be, always be running away or kiting away, and you still got two t guns firing, and the ballistics of the shells are ungodly. I mean. Uh, let's take a look at the Elbing here. Uh, where's it at? Yeah, Elbing. Let's look for Elbing. Here we go. Elbing, what is it at? The main battery. Look at this thing. This thing, see, of course, the two turrets are at the back. And forgive me, I have to uh, keep shifting my screen to see everything. The two turrets are in the back right there. You can see right there, back, really great angles. Uh, the AP shells, ridiculous. 960 meters per second, so they're going really fast, dealing 4,100 damage, so almost double. And the Irkish angles are also high. Fuse time, 0 0.2025 with the threshold, 25 million. I mean, these things literally punish you from far, far away. Look at the ballistics of this thing. They're going super fast, 12 kilometers, great speed, great angles, and they just melt uh, cruisers. So very, very, very powerful if you're looking for a, um, a destroyer. In uh, clan bouts, I definitely rank that really, really high. Very powerful guns. Even the HE shells damage. They pin 30 millimeters because they're big 150 millimeter guns. They pin to cruisers. They pin destroyers very well. They destroy them, melt them. Battleships are just susceptible to these AP shells. So, and it's quick. Elbing is really fast uh, for what it is, for the size that it is. It has a high HP pull, like 30,000 if you build for it, 34,000 if you really go out for it. And torpedoes actually do a lot of significant damage because I've launched these things and they're quick reloads as well. So very, very versatile ship for clan battles and you can use it for any kind of situations and so forth. So yeah, I, I think it's very, very powerful. Uh, Gdansk, I... I, I I want to say it's good. Um, I would almost put it near the middle of A and B because right now I feel like it has been either countered very well or kind of the people understand how to play against it. But I would still say it's very, very powerful because it's versatile as well. It's just kind of like the daring. Uh, it's got the, uh, except minus heal. So it doesn't have heals. That's the downside of the Gdansk. However, it, the European side doesn't have uh, the heals on this side, but it's fast. It's got four guns, which is kind of like Marceau Clabert style, and it's, it's like the Mogador style line, but it's European. It's got torpedoes, which are the Holland kind of style torpedoes, but they're not as, as you know, I would say fast. They're decent, but they only go out to 10. That's the other downside. They don't go out to 10, so it's kind of like along the daring 10-kilometer torpedoes nowadays. Eh, uh, they're, they're there to just stop, but they don't do pack as heavy as a punch. The selling point is the radar-smoke combination, the, but the radar only lasts maybe about 9 to 11 seconds if you build for it, so you get maybe a two shots off, or not two shots, but I would say a few salvos off. The reload rate's great on this thing if you build for it. The fire chance is great. Uh, the smoke is the selling point, so you got radar and smoke, and the, the, the radars are on a quick cooldown, so you could sit in your smoke for at least a minute and a half and then still get that radar off a cooldown. 
It's not as maneuverable. I think it's a little sluggish compared to the Daring, but the, it makes up for the high DPM firepower. And if you build long range enough, it can really start a lot of fires. But that's all this really is. It's just like a kind of like a fast go start a ruckus. Go sh I, I use it for long range uh, fire starting. Uh, and it's going to get outspotted all day long. Uh, I usually don't even care about consuming on this thing. As soon as I get spotted, I pop the radar, but again, the radar only lasts about nine to 11 seconds. So it's a different play style. In my personal opinion, is it good for a clan, uh, battles and ranked? Uh, I guess this is what this video is for. I, I mean, for my play style, a, but for the average player, I would say, no, I would say B is average. It, it's just kind of like there is the smoke radar gimmick, but with the, the radar and clan battles and everything, I would push it back down. But for me, I would say, yes, I definitely like it for clan battles for, I would say the average player that just is, is not really played destroyer and not, uh, is not a DD main and just plays it. I think it's kind of the average, but for me, I would bump it up there. But for, for the, I would say the average player, probably around the B, it's just an average uh, so-called ship gearing, uh, for clan battles. I've seen a lot of gearings, uh, for some reason. Uh, do I recommend it? Me personally? I know. I, I think it's average. It's just the torpedoes, the selling point and smokes and spots. If that is your place off of your clan, absolutely. It does a great job of it. But for, if you're going to go out there and hunt destroyers and do capping and do everything that I do and my play style where I'm a super aggressive. No, I think gearing is just an average destroyer. It's one of the first destroyers I got. It was the, the beginning of the meta, but it doesn't have any gimmicks. It's literally just here, 23,000, 22,000 HP, whoop de doo no heals, it's got the long-lasting smoke, and that's good for smoke screens. For if you're going to do some kind of a smoke screen cruiser combination for for clan battles, honestly, that's just sitting in the back. That's good maybe for randoms, but for clan battles, if that's your playstyle, great. I don't think sitting in smoke and spamming is really all that great, and sitting in the back is boring in clan battles because it's only seven versus seven. So I think I give it an average, but again, if that's your play style, so be it. I don't, I don't ever pick gearings, honestly, for clan battles. Uh, Grosavoy is along another, the same long lines as an average ship. Uh, Grosavoy's got good DPM fire reload rate. It's got heals. It's got uh, very excellent uh, shell arcs and angles. It's got the torpedoes that are okay. They're not the greatest. Uh, I don't think it's a torpedo boat at all. It's more of the gunboat kind of style. So I definitely recommend if this is kind of that, you replace all the Soviet cruiser line uh, for gunboats. Like the, it's like the Harugumo line of the Soviet cruiser line. Again, I don't see many Grosovoys out there. Even though it's fast, it's quick, I, I just don't know why. I don't know why people don't pick it. Uh, I don't pick it either. I think it doesn't it doesn't suit my playstyle for what I'm trying to do. I'm looking for maximum gun power and and reload rate and build. And if I wanted to do what a Grosavoy does, might as well pick the um, the Haraguma line. And I'll take a look. Wait, what does the Grosavoy show here? Um, the Grosavoy is yeah down here. So I mean, what does it have? I mean, it has it's, it's okay. It's average. It's I mean, you look at here the stats right here. I mean. Three 130 millimeter guns. The pen. What are the pen? What's the pen? Uh, it pens. Man, I must be reading this wrong. Main battery. Yep. HE shells. They pen 22. So, average. Yeah, it's just an average destroyer. Uh, again, I don't see any gimmicks on it uh, that really sell uh, me why this thing is any kind of uh, somewhat powerful. Let me let me put what are what are its consumables. I always forget. Uh, Gearing, Daring, Kabrosk, Grozovoy. It's got the heals. That's the selling point. It's got the repair party, 14% heal. That's that's kind of the big thing. It's kind of like that Cabal Roth's kind of style play, but it's a gunboat. It's got the two smokes and speed boost and AA. Oh, yeah. So it's speed boost, yay, whoop de doo. It's got the heals. The selling point is maybe the heals because it's so uh, hard to hit. Excuse me, I sneezed right there. Yeah, so again, I think it's just average. I don't really see it that much, honestly, out there. So, I mean, while we're talking about the Kabarovs, uh, the Kabarovs, I don't see it because it's outspotted all the time. Even with the improved heals buffs they did recently, I don't see any Kabarovs in clan battles. So, it's just outspotted all the time. It's very difficult. Now, it can be annoying. It can be difficult to kill out there. Uh, it's kind of just way out there. And in canon, this is kind of like the, I'm not going to talk about the super ships because um, not many people run super ship destroyers uh, right now in clan battles because they're saving it for either the battleship, the cruiser. But the Kabarovs uh, is kind of like the, the Zorky. Zorky is the Kabarovs with an extra burst fire. Again, it's just that long range, annoying, spamming, runaway, shoot at me kind of destroyer. I don't think it's it has any kind of effective use 
in clan battles because it just takes too long to be effective and requires too much. And you're outspotted. Again, you're always outspotted. So you're always getting shot out by cruisers, radar cruisers, whatever, if you're outspotted by, let's say, a gearing or a Shimikaze. Hayate, uh, I've seen it a couple times, but it gets eaten alive by any other radar destroyer out there, like a small and a druid, whatever. Uh, Ahate is kind of like a mixture of maybe a gunboat Shimakaze. It's got the, the nice fire rate of Shimakaze line. It's got the nice uh, torpedoes. Where do I rank it? Uh, it's average. It, it, it does what it needs to do as a basic destroyer player. Again, Shimakaze is the same along the line of, since we're on the topic, Shimakaze is average if you're a torpedo player. If you're a torpedo destroyer, then you're running around just torping, spotting, and so forth, and maybe laying out on a smoke screen. I, that's, I, I lay the Hayate Shimakaze and the gearing kind of like all in this category right here, where it is not going out there being aggressive. It's just going out there to spot. It won't shoot. Shimakaze kind of torps from a distance. It lays smoke down, and it's more of a passive player. Um, for me, that's average. My play style, I'm aggressive. I want to attack. I want to kill ships. I want to burn them down. I want to go in and, and just overwhelm a, a cap and push forward with my team. Now, Shimakaze in the hands of a right player can really be devastating, but in the late game, if you're the last destroyer, it's just running around capping at that point. So that's my personal opinion, my thought. Holland, it is average, I think. It doesn't excel in any category other than it has the torpedoes that don't do that as heavy of a damage, but they do go out there and reach 15 kilometers, which is cool. But a lot of the times the cruisers and destroyer players are out running in the flanks. Uh, they're sitting there, their nose in. So even if you launch a bunch of torpedoes at that person or at that cruiser, it's not going to be as effective damage. It doesn't have enough firepower damage output that I, I recommend it. And the guns don't shoot that far. So if you don't build for gun range, it's only about 10 and a half, 10 range, 10 to 11. So you're well within cruiser radar range, which is what the meta today is in clan battles. A lot of radar cruisers. This thing can't really take on any kind of a cruiser. And if you go again head to head with another destroyer player, it, it, the damage output is just not there. It can get bullied by, let's say, the Gdansk. So. Uh, yeah, it's got the heals. That's cool. And AA is the best for the Holland, but there's no CVs in clan battles. So it kind of negates its power. So re really, I don't think so. Haragumo, definite must. Uh, for clan battles, uh, this thing is a Dragon's Breath fire starter output, minigun, whatever you want to call it. It spits out so much damage. And if you build for range, I pick the Haragumo all the time for that reason. If I want to pump out a lot of damage on the battleships, it is devastating and difficult to deal with. The the um, the, the guns penetrate 30 millimeter without building for IFHE or anything. Starts a lot of fires. Very, very powerful. Very decent and very effective. It can hunt destroyers down with ease. It can melt destroyers with ease. You just got to have a supporting player. Now, in clan battles, you are supporting each other with radar, comms, discord, everything. So, yeah, the Haragumo line really isn't effective if you work together and use its firepower uh, in those late games and definitely use it to push together. I definitely recommend the Haragoma line. It's very, very powerful. Kleber, mm, I'll say average. I have seen Kleber players run, although they don't do enough damage output to warrant it because you're not one. The torpedoes only go out so far. If you do the legendary build, you can get the concealment down pretty low, but again, the torpedoes are short range that you have to go in and actually expose yourself too much to enemy fire. And they're good for the flanks and running down things. But the Kleber, because the reason why the Kleber is in the average category, because you have this, the Marceau, which is definitely, I would say, broken, overpowered. Marceau literally can run the game. I mean, that's why I put the Kleber in the average range, because if in the hands, you have to be very, very skilled to be a Kleber player to do that. And I've seen players do very, very well, but they're very highly skilled and they know what they're doing. I don't personally run it because the gun turrets are slow. The reload is slow. Even with the reload booster, it's only at certain moments of the game that you can use it. And then it gets outgunned by the cruisers or other DD gunboats that really can just melt it alive. The Marceau, since it's in the game, overpowers the Kleber, in my personal opinion. I mean, the reload, look, if, if you don't, if you don't look, believe me, look at the stats. I mean, the Marceau is at the top, uh, let's see, your general, it's general. The Marceau ranks in the top, not, not for just be, for the name itself, but because the HE didn't, it's got the highest output damage and the highest AP damage, uh, near the Haragumo. So it, it's just fast. It's a, it's a club air with better guns in my personal opinion. And then you can sit back and just spam, uh, these HE shells that do amazing damage. It's like a Colbert in DD form. It's spitting out a lot of shells. Torpedoes are actually longer range than Colbert. You go out to nine, so you can do at least something with it. And 
Uh, you're running the flanks. You're hunting, running down destroyers. You're hunting them down. You're speeding. You can go around the cap and, and, and around the game and cap everything so quickly. You can move around the map quickly. You can go from one end of the map to the other. Very decent in the amount of time that you have. So Marceau, since it's in the game, I, it outbeats the Colbert in my personal opinion. Again, just my opinion. I have seen people running Colbert, but I think Marceau is the top one. I've won a lot, a lot of games just with Marceau's alone. Lucian, I thought would have been good, but unfortunately... I have to rank it as nothing now because the, the guns just don't do anything. Even though they're fast firing reload rate, it the, the Lucian has that heal that is a slow heal, but it, you can you can heal almost all your damage back. But the problem is it, it's slow tick. It's a slow roller. Therefore, you're out of the game if you're not shooting. No smoke. And actually, wait, I think it does have smoke. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's see. What does the Lucian have? Uh, let me go find it. General... Yeah, Lucian right here. Okay, Lucian, what does it have? It has... Oops, hold on. Lucian's consumable. Lucian has no smoke, I believe. Yep, no smoke. So the Lucian has the heals that are great, and but it restores a significant part of the HP, but the repair damage takes a long time. That's the downside. Uh, but you can heal back a lot of your, your damage. So very forgiving. However, it's too slow. And the guns don't do much. I mean, let's look at the guns. Uh, the, the Lucian, the guns, whoops, the guns, they pin, let's see here, uh, HE shells, they pin 22. They, they just don't do much enough damage output. I mean, they're really fast reloading. Uh, they're very quick. The reload time's amazing. However, uh, they only do 1,400 damage. I mean, the damage output HEPM is low. So, yeah, it's not as high as you'd want it to be because it's just it, either the shells shatter or they don't do enough damage or I don't know what it is. It's, it, you would think this thing is like a, a Friesland or something that really does a really significant amount of damage. But when I'm, I'm seeing playing against cruisers and battleships, it can make a start a fire here or two, but it just doesn't do enough for some reason. I don't know what the gimmick or RNG is about it, but... It's got a quick reload time, but they nerfed something about the guns that just doesn't do enough damage for my liking. Therefore, I don't run it. I don't see many players running that as well. So, yeah, that's that's my thought on that. I think it's just an average, below average ship nowadays. Uh, the deep water torpedoes are cool, but everybody's got hydro, and they can see them from long range away. And you're not really running and gunning with this thing. It's very deadly if it gets caught in the open. So, Or, or I'm sorry, it's not deadly. It's just done when it gets caught in the open. Uh, let's talk about Ragnar. I think it's uh, one of my go-to ships in clan battles. Ragnar, very, very powerful. It bullies destroyers. It bullies cruisers. It's got the big 150 millimeter guns that do great pen on cruisers and uh, light cruisers and battleships even. And it is, it is just a fire starter output damage thing. And it's got the 7.5 radar that lasts a long time. It's got the speed boost, which I've built for it now with the um, the upgrade uh, for speed boost. So the speed boost lasts a long time for about a minute and a half. And you can juke shells back and forth. So I think it's a really good for spamming HE, being annoying to cruisers. And especially that's what you need. You need a destroyer to go out there, spot the destroyers, pop. As soon as you get spotted, that 7.5 kilometers concealment. Say, say a destroyer spots you at 7.5. It out detects you, but you can pop the radar right away. You have 30 seconds to output your damage on that destroyer. It melts destroyers. And then you can also bully uh, cruisers because the guns are so big that they can actually just sit there, spam, and melt destroyer, uh, cruiser players that just sit there. Uh, and radar you, and then that's all you can do. But that, hey, the Ragnar is really great at burning and down ships. It'll distract a lot of the cruisers. So it is great for what I play as a harasser. Look at the Daring, Hiragumo, and Ragnar are both great fire starters, and they just sit there and spam HE shells. That's what you want as damage output for um, for the clan battle season. So that's my personal opinion. Regalo is... I haven't seen many clan battles either, but it's kind of along the lines of the... Um, Alvaro de Bazan, Apollo Emilio, it's got that smoke that's annoying. Uh, the Albregelio, it's got the uh, exhaust smoke. So as, as you're driving in, pop the smoke. It follows you everywhere you go. However, with radar, you don't want to do that too much because then if you're not, you have no one spotting for you and the radars pop, you have no idea what you're looking at. You can't see anything, but you're exposed. The sap shells are powerful. So I will give, that's why it bumps it up to the average because they do output a lot of damage. Um, the reload rate's not there, but the sap shells do a lot, a lot of damage when you do hit, uh, get connection on a destroyer player. And if a destroyer player is caught in the open and no support, man, you can melt destroyers. But again, it's an average ship. The do torpedoes, uh, I'll take a look at the torpedoes. Where's the torpedoes on this thing? Um, the torpedoes are okay. They're not, 
I mean, they go 13 and a half kilometers, which I have seen do somewhat damage, but the reaction time is 6.6 .6 seconds. So you see these things come from my way. The reload is great, 90 seconds, but the speed is so slow. It's 56 knots. So that's why it's not really doable if you need the torpedoes in the long game. I don't know. I, I, I don't see many people running them. I don't run the Regalo now in Clambos. I tried it. It, it just doesn't seem to work and not have enough damage output to be effective for my team because I need to put a, a lot of firepower down range to help my team out. And the, that's why the top six right here, you see, these are great at putting out damage. And they, they spit out damage so that it helps your team. Sherman is right up there, man. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Sherman is one of my go-to uh, clan battleships. Now, the problem with this thing is if a lot of people gripe about the Sherman is the torpedoes. The torpedoes are only single launched and there's only two per side. But I have made hits before. It's weird. These single torpedoes just somehow just sneak up on you and they get them. But unfortunately, they just don't do enough damage output because there's only two of them per side. And you got to get that right perfect angle on a ship. And ships are always running around with hydro and moving around. The only thing the selling point of this thing is it has the smoke, five kilometer hydro for protection against you and torpedoes. And it just spits out sap shells like the Austin. This is like the Austin on steroids as a destroyer. That's why it outbeats the Regala because the output of the sap shells is constant. It's just constantly spitting out sap shells as well as HE shells if you want to start fires and they reach out to 15 kilometers. So you are literally sitting in the back shooting from smoke, cover, or whatever, and the Sherman deals so much output damage. It's incredible uh, that I really do enjoy it. I mean, actually, let me take a look. What does the Forest Sherman have in output damage? Yeah, the Sherman's right here. It spits out sap DPM 324. That's one of the highest, right? Yep, for Sherman, right there. See, the Gala is right there with it, but this the Sherman just outputs so much. And the HE damage is nothing to gawk at as well. It is still doing a lot right there at 216,000. So right up there with the daring. So that's why I think I, I rank it up there pretty well. Now, the problem with the ship is it's just very, very, very slow. Um, Almost too slow because the problem with the, the, the speed, you need the speed to move around to go cap and do things that your cruiser and battleship players can't do. Remember, there, there's just you. There, most of the time in clan battles, there's only two destroyers maybe. And if you're the only destroyer, you're going too, too slow. Acceleration is slow. The total speed, uh, let's see, where is it at? Max speed, 33 knots. I mean, even if you buff it, it's only going 35. So... Yeah, it's very difficult. That's why with the, the ships like Marceau out there that go run around and do wreck havoc everywhere, the Sherman, the speed is though it's the downside. The torpedoes is the downside. But if you're looking for like a, a minigun of spitting shells right here, that's exactly what you want is the Sherman. Small and, yeah, overpowered. However, I used to say overpowered in clan battles. Now, I'm going to have to bump it down. It is powerful. It is not my go-to anymore. Because the problem is, it's just too easy to hit now. For some reason, they did something where any kind of shell launched at long range, whatever it hits, and the small end is just like a magnet for shells nowadays. It's just, it's just not there anymore. Um, the radar is the selling point because as soon as you get detected, boom, you pop the radar or 7.5 radar, right? It just melts destroyers down. However, the HP is not as high as the Ragnar the Sherman, the Marceau, the Elbing, and the Dirty. These things outdo it in HP because you only start with 22,000-ish if you buff for the, for the uh, survivability. It's got the heals, but they don't do enough to get forgive the damage that you're requiring to do. You are doing you are literally a gunboat that's going to draw so much fire that the small end is literally... That means if you want to mitigate your damage, you got to stop firing. Well, what's the selling point of the small end? The guns. Well, if you don't fire the guns, you're not doing anything. The torpedoes are whatever, mediocre. They're kind of like the Holland. They're tired torpedoes, but they don't do as much damage, and you only got eight of them. Eight torpedoes every salvo, so... I don't know. It used to be overpowered, but now they think they nerfed it to the point where it's easy to kill, it's easy to hit, the HP's not there in the world of high HP DDs now. It can melt things if you build, but you got to build out for the range of the guns. So I'm going to have to bump it down from being broken to really just being a go-to ship if you want to. But again, I don't see many small ones out there nowadays. Even I don't pick it because... It's just not there anymore. I'm actually going to have to bump it down. I think the small end is kind of average nowadays because the radar can be defeated by running away. It can be overpowered by a lot of the over the, the new DDs out there. And the cruisers uh, can, can pop radar and spot you and hit you with great accuracy because the maneuverability is not there. I'm sad to say I have to bump the small end down as not my go-to ship anymore, but uh, that's unfortunate. Even in randoms nowadays with the CVs, the subs, and everything small end, the maneuverability is not there. It can't turn as well as a daring can. 
uh, it, it can get bullied. Like I've seen a Ragnar take on a small one and, and can just melt it. So because the HP is better than the Ragnar, I can get the Ragnar up to 30,000. The small one only has starting about 22,000 ish. So yeah, and the small caliber guns, uh, yeah, the, the Ragnar is the bigger brother, small one. That's, that's why I would rather go with the Ragnar rather than the small one. Yeah. I'm sorry to say, yeah, small one's not my go-to anymore. Summers, I have seen a lot of summers. It's kind of like the gearing. To me, personally, the gearing is like the, the summer's like the gearing with extra set of guns, maybe tor more torpedoes. Yeah. yeah, that's all I can say about it. Summers, nothing really that is a selling point or a gimmick. If you like running DDs and running around doing smoke screens and uh, throwing torpedoes out there, uh, it's got decent concealment. It goes in spots and does an average job of what it's what a basic destroyer is supposed to do. Will, will it win games? I haven't really seen one. I haven't really seen a Summers really go out there and do the firepower gunboat thing, uh, pump out enough torpedoes to do damage, or run the caps or anything. It's just too easily spotted, and with radar, yeah. Trump? Trump is good because it's got the big caliber guns that melt ships. The The problem is the airstrike is the selling point of this thing, right? Now, it can outspot a lot of these DDs. The, the, the Trump has a 5.9 concealment, so if you build for it, it can outspot everything. However, there's it doesn't have hydro or radar. It can do the, the airstrikes, the airstrikes, but you got to get within 10 kilometers. That's the problem. I mean, Guten Lao, at least you can do it at about 13-ish, right? 13 and a half. So that means that you can actually sit 13 away from a radar cruiser and be okay. But for what you're trying to do in clan battles, all they can do is really use the guns that reach out a little bit further and they melt and they pin great pen because it's 150 millimeter guns. Here, I'll take a sh I'll show you what I'm talking about. The Trump right here. Here it is. I'll bring it up. There's a Trump. The Bane battery can, it can look, it can do, here, I'll show you HE shells, which is the bread and butter. What you're selling. It can pin 30 because it's 150 millimeters. It'll pin 30. However, I mean the range, let's see here. What's the main battery range? 13, you build four, you can go up to 15. So it is long range HE spamming and that's really it. But the problem is it lacks the, the DPM. Even the Lucian does more DPM than this. So that's why I wouldn't say it's a selling point. That's why I don't see many tromps out there. Uh, it's just average. Uh, it's very poor maneuverability in my perspective. It feels sluggish. I feel like I'm turning a cruiser or something in the tromp. That's why it doesn't really do well. It can't hunt destroyers down. Now, if it is spotted, it can go one to toe to toe with a destroyer if it, if it wants to, but you have to run away and no smoke, no radar, no hydro, no nothing. And you can't, you don't have any heals. So if you're trying to do gunboat, you don't have any heals. That's very, very lacking. So that's why you need the heals in, to make up for it. You notice that the Druid has heals, the Ragnar has heals, the Daring has heals. That's why those are in the top. Now the, 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 the Kabaroffs has heals, the small and heals, but they, unfortunately they don't, they don't, they don't serve the purpose I'm looking for. Vampire, very powerful. Uh, now, the reason why this is an exception, it doesn't have heals, but it's got very quick reload, very quick. Uh, it's got the crawling smoke, so you got to go at one quarter speed, and you're moving. However, in the nature of radar, you got to be careful. Don't get caught in radar, but it's got those uh, those torpedoes that do reach out a good distance, maybe about the 12 distance, 12, 12 kilometer distance, so at least it goes a little further than the daring, but you only get one set of it. So... And they're single launch torpedoes, so you can do maybe decent amount of work. But the Vampire, it's got the reason why it sells is because it just spits out shells so well. And that's why I like it. The Vampire can do a nice, decent enough. See, look, the DPM on the Vampire is up there with the Marceau Smallin. It, it's got great HE. That's what I'm. That's the selling point. The AP guns are also excellent because they shoot out 300,000 AP. Uh, DPM, and they have really good improved angles, and the angles are what I like about it. The reload rate and the angles of the AP shells are kind of along line the Druid, so that's why I like it so much, and uh, I would pick it. Uh, the unfortunate thing is you got to be careful since you don't have any heals. I mean, here's the rickish angles of the uh, the Vampire along the line, kind of close to what the vamp the uh, Druid does. Uh, the Druid, uh, and now the, the problem with Vampire and Druid is this research bureau stuff. So you got to put out a little bit of time and effort to get it, but when you get it, it does do a lot of damage. A caveat, the Vampire and Druid, you have to play with kitten gloves. You don't want to get caught in radar. You can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of these heavy firepower destroyers unless you have support and can use the crawling smoke to your advantage. So it's very situational. I do recommend the Vampire's APs uh, guns because they do do a lot of great, great damage like the Druid does. And it's a selling point. The problem is the Druid has heals. The Vampire doesn't. So that's why you can't heal the damage if you're going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
and go gunboating, like I said. Yo Yang, average, just like a gear. It's just another gearing with deep water torpedoes, but it, you can build it with a radar, but unfortunately, the radar nowadays is situational. And because you don't have many destroyer players that are good in clan battles, I don't just want to get caught in the open. And you have radar cruisers anyway, so you probably would go for the smoke for the Yu Yang if you want to and just kind of go around and do what gearing things do. So that's my personal opinion on that. Z42 it is the Harogumo of. It's the Harugumo of the, the German line. Unfortunately, I don't think it can do what the Harugumo does as well because the selling point is the AP guns. The AP is very devastating, not the HE. The HE, although it can pin... Actually, the, the AP... Let me look at the guns. I think the AP... You have to build AFHE if you want to pin the certain things. The Let's see. Let me take a look at it. Where is it at? Z42. Uh, no, there it is. Z42. Now, the Z42 has got good... Uh, see, the DPM... There it is. So, as you can see... The Z42 is low on the HE DPM. It's not great on the scale. AP damage is the selling point, but again, a lot of the, the players, you got to angle to it. So let's take a look at the Z42. The Z42, the AP shells, you have, the angles aren't there. So if you get, you got to, it's like 45, 60, not as good as the Vampire and the Druid. And that's the, but it does spit out a lot, good speed on them, good reload rate. I mean, the reload rate is, is incredible on the, the, uh, the, the main battery for AP, but unfortunately, the HE DPM is not there, and that's the, that's what you want. You need to start a lot of fires. It's only 26 millimeter damage, while the Harugumo can pen 30. So again, you need that the HE damage, and it's kind of mediocre in that sense. And the, the, I mean, the selling point of what the Z42 is, it's got that six kilometer hydro with quick smokes, and I just don't see it being in that meta, and that's why the Z52, I think, now is also kind of low as well. It's almost below average because Z52 and the Z42, the gimmick is 6-kilometer hydro in smoke. And then when you do shoot in smoke, it's the APs. you got to use the AP shells, but again, a lot of cru you got a lot of cruisers out there, so you need to start a lot of fires or get a lot of firepower down range. And the Z42 and the Z52 is just not there. They can bully destroyers, but there's only two at the most, maybe three. Or And there's not many destroyers that go around bullying in clan battles. You're dealing with a lot of cruisers and a lot of battleships. So you therefore, you need to have the whole gamut of, like, you know, fire starting ability, uh, AP, uh, AP damage as well, as well as uh, the high HE DPM that you need that penetrates that threshold of 30 millimeters or more. Uh, the Z42 and the Z52 just don't have it. Again, the re guns reload really slow on the Z52. It's average. And then the Z42 is, although higher fire rate, I think the Harugumo does a better job. Now, if you get caught inside of that 6-kilometer hydro and he's in smoke and he's using AP, yeah, definitely. Z42 is great. But how many situations are you in in clan battles that require that? Uh, a lot of the times, these these typhoon players and storm players that I played against, they're sitting in the back, they're, they're hiding behind islands, they they got good overlapping radar coverage, so very very difficult for these guys to go in. You're gonna have to do that long range because initially you have to do the long range. Notice like look, Elbing Druid, if you build for it, Marceau, do you build for long range? He spamming Ragnar Sherman Haragum the same, and, and, and of course like Vampire. Those guys, for my play style, I'm launching shells at long range, just trying to kill one person at a time. And then when I want to bully destroyer, I want it to have the advantage. And that's what these top three right here in the top five, they can bully uh, destroyers very easily if they had to go one on one, no problem. And then, of course, you got to have a little bit more agility and speed to get around. Now, that's the exception. Now, the Druid's slow, but the Elbing and Marceau are quick. Uh, these guys right here, the Sherman, Vampire, Ragnar, Hero, Guma, Daring, are decent speeds. They're not as fast. Uh, even Cabros and Red Gala go a lot faster. Claber very fast. However, these guys can deal damage a lot better. They can spit it out and go toe to toe, and that's that's the the, the ranking for me in this clan battle season. Now, what I've been using, what I've seen works very well. Uh, I think that's how I would rank that. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, subscribe, button below as always. But this is just my play style. Uh, of course, let me know your play style. What do you think? But that's what I recommend right now. And again to again the, a lot of these ships are almost deemed overpowered or broken and uh, a lot of these require somewhat of a grind and kind of are in the research bureau kind of pay to win kind of thing right but that's what you're doing you're paying to win uh, especially with the druid marceau ragnar vampire these require you know to grind and get those research bureau now some of these tech tree lines like uh elbing is a tech tree daring Harugumo, though these are okay these are the top tech tree line the ones that i've seen Sherman is a premium ship. Again, the rest of these ships right here, mediocre average. You can do decent with it, but not nothing to I would say that sees you actually winning the game uh, or being that very determining factor. Now, I would say the gearing is good for smoke screens and torpedoes, and may, that may win you the game if that's your play style. But again, 
that's my thoughts. So hope that helps. Let me know your thoughts and uh, hope you guys are doing well. Cheers.